Gigantic. Pop. Welcome back, everybody. March 23rd, 2024. Gigantic Pop coming at you to talk about the state of things on the road to WrestleMania. I'm Glenn Rubenstein, joined by Raj Geary and Matt Morgan. Matt, how you doing, man? How's the weather in Florida? I'm, it's always beautiful, uh, always balmy and sunny, and I miss that music. God, I miss that music. <laughs> it, it feels like it's been weeks since we've done it, even though I guess it's been, you know, since we're Mercedes debuted, but it yeah. feels like it's been yeah. a while. How's, yeah, so, how's the Mercedes era of AEW going? I've been busy. Like, how's that working? Uh, Raj? <laughs> well, if you're looking at it from a rating standpoint, uh, and not just her, Okada, Will Ospreay, uh, they haven't been great. They've been lower than what they've been doing, lo- lower than average. And, I, you know, again, I think putting Mercedes in there with Willow and Julia Hart um, and Sky Blue, it, you're, you're not getting the most out of her. And I, I just felt like they did it wrong. They handled it wrong. I felt like they should have had vignettes and really build up her debut as opposed to doing yes. what they did with Punk. So it's so it's been so there. So it's been there. For folks that don't know, that is a very popular <laughs> Raj Gary quote. It's, 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 hang on, it's there. Um, <laughs> so, so we're stoked to have you back, Roz. Welcome back from vacation, my friend. Um, I was just going to say that, so as a wrestler, and I'm looking at it, I'm going, okay, they're obviously trying to give Willow Nightingale the rub, right? Willow's mm-hmm. charismatic as it gets, and then she's got charisma by the bucket load. But, um, I, I agree with you that you need to bring a Mercedes Monet in with like a major talent. You have to because, like, but then hang on. As soon as I say that though, Raj and Glenn, it goes back to what I always go back to my TNA example of we brought in RVD, Jeff Hardy, Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, and I'm leaving other. Oh, no big deal. Mr. Kennedy or Mr. Anderson, all in the same episode. And it only raised us 0.2 points on Spike TV from a 1.2 that we were averaging on Spike TV, which AEW would kill to have, and they don't. No offense, AEW haters or AEW lovers. But, um, like, it raised it to 1.4. That's all it could do with Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, RVD, Jeff Hardy, Mr. Kennedy, who was hot at the time, right? So I don't think that's on uh, Mercedes Monet. Specifically, I think it's on Tony to book her properly and bring her at, uh, back in a way which smashes like ratings. People want to watch, it and uh, you you can't miss this episode because she's gonna say blank, right? Something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. So, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's still early. Obviously, the big feuds are still out there. Yeah, you know, obviously down the road, Britt Baker when she's yeah. back, that's that's the big yeah. one. Um, so yeah, yeah, we'll give it time. <clears throat> so we got a lot to talk about today. We're going to do a recap of kind of where we're standing going into WrestleMania. We're going to talk about some other miscellaneous stuff, I'm sure. But Matt Morgan has been blowing up our group chain <laughs> uh, because Matt has got some feelings about Mr. Cody Rhodes and the promos he has been cutting. And Matt, I want to give you the spotlight because no I know you've been sitting on this. I know you did like a V1 video that was so big it wouldn't upload, folks. Matt Morgan like literally broke YouTube with his thoughts about Cody's promo Monday. And I'm sure he's got more to say after his promo on SmackDown last night. So, Matt, I want to give you the floor to, to uh, speak your truth. Glenn, where were you when I was still wrestling to be my manager and hype me up? Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I really could have used to. Good Lord. Uh, do my talking. Um, am I hyping? But um, on Monday night after the Cody Rhodes promo, on my Monday Night Raw, I tried and attempted to send my live cut take on Cody's promo. And for whatever reason, it would not send. I could email it. I could text it. It was not working because I tried to download it here. So my apologies to our fans. I did try my best, but Mr. Blabbermouth over here talked too long. It made the file too big. But um, <laughs> I had so much to say because if you guys follow me on Twitter at BP Matt Morgan, I kept saying leading into Monday Night Raw of this past week that Cody has got to ditch the suit. He's got to ditch the pocket watch. He's got to ditch everything, and we need to see a major gear shift in Cody Rhodes' character of, I 
I have taken what I could take, but I can't stand no more. You talked about my mom. Ish is on now, fool. And I felt like on Monday Night Raw, we kind of got that. But we got it in the same Cody package. For those that will argue, well, Matt, Cody in his suit and tie and his sweet poke, uh, so poke, pocket pocket watch with his sweet chain connected to it. <sighs> Looking more like Mr. Belvedere than somebody that's going to kick your ass in a fight. Um, has worked for him. I made him the most popular babyface in all pro wrestling. I will say, I'll agree with you. I am the world's biggest Cody crybaby. I'm seven feet tall. It's over 300 pounds. So I will anoint myself as the world's biggest uh, Cody crybaby. Cry, cry <laughs> baby. Easy for me to say. Um, so with that, me being a huge fan of Cody and what he's been doing, I thought he needed to make a major gear shift. And I don't think we got that in that promo. I thought we got elements of it, right? But it was an over-rehearsed promo, meaning it was all scripted, and you could tell it was scripted. It, it, this was the one promo that I just wish Cody would burn the thesaurus and shit can it and come out and let us know what he's really thinking. Rock talked about his mom in that promo, and I'm going back to the Friday beforehand with especially Rock's promo on Instagram, the Friday before this Monday Night Raw retaliation from Cody, right? Or rebut from Cody. And the minute Rock brought his mom into it, we should have seen a what type of promo from Cody. And I thought we didn't get that. We got elements of it. Elements. Meaning... He did bring up, he, he knows his mom, but his mom's a wonderful person and all the other great stuff he tried to say. That is what a baby, for those that were disappointed that he crap all over Rock's mom, what are you thinking? He, he's a baby face. He should not have crapped on Rock's mom for those keeping score at home. He did that perfectly, if, in my opinion. But he should have really shown the, I'm going to beat your ass come night one of WrestleMania because you made it about my mom. It's on, fool. We needed that type of promo, that type of intensity, and we don't get that if we're looking at a dude rocking a banker suit. I'm not saying to make fun of him. I'm again the number one Cody crybaby in the universe. I was the first, not the first, but one of the first former pro wrestlers that were out there admitting, "Yeah, I'm a Cody crybaby." Rock, I don't want you wrestling Roman Reigns on night one or two of WrestleMania. Cody, it's Cody, it's Cody. You know, so I'm saying that as a huge fan and mark of Cody Rhodes and his story. I know people can make fun of uh, Cody Rhodes finishing the story. I don't think there's nothing to make fun of. I think they did a great job of leading us up to here. And that's why I was so pissed that Rock was going to step in and just say, screw you and your storyline. Here's the problem. Rock is cutting these world beater promos, world beater promos of all time, clowning Cody and making him look not cool. He's making Seth Rollins look not cool. So both of them need to step their games up big time with their verbiage on how they retaliate. It can't be the same old status quo. They both, especially Cody, have got to show a major gear shift in their character. Folks that don't know what I'm talking about, look at Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle is the world, in my opinion, the world's greatest gear shifter not just in the match when somebody kicks out of his finisher or false finisher, etc., but his character. Kurt can go from making fun of himself to being the biggest badass in America like that when it was time to do so. And we needed that from Cody Rhodes this past Monday night on Raw, and I did not like his response. That's my opinion. Yeah, and, and you, we saw glimpses of it from Seth when he called Rock Mr. Midlife Crisis, things like that, where you, you really have to come in and, you know, kind of step on his shoes and not take it. Raj, you hit it on the head. Like, I thought Seth was more intense, way mm. more intense with his uh, rebuttals to uh, Rock. You're correct. And, and he got right in Rock's face. He didn't look diminutive in height, right? That's a big mm -hmm. thing. Right. And and hit him back with, listen, Mr. Midlife Crisis. I was like, yeah, get him, Seth. Get him. <laughs> yeah. It's tough because you have to strike the balance, right? It's like you want to do something heartfelt. You want to do something meaningful. But, Matt, I think you really hit the nail on the head because with the suit, the pocket watch, it's like he's he's out there. 
and saying, uh, you know, in this verbal duel, if you cast jest towards the matriarch of my family, well, such levelly you while entertaining, it tests the boundaries of proprietary. As a gentleman and a scholar of the old school, I cannot let this pass unaddressed. <laughs> and, and for folks that think he's being funny, no offense, he wasn't far off the mark from what yeah. Cody said. Yeah, yeah he Get needs rid to be more John burn. Cena. Less, less, burn, uh, burn, burn, yeah. burn, burn the thesaurus, Cody. Get rid of it. Yes, but more uh, John Cena, less uh, Fraser Crane, you know. John, yeah. John Cena could be yeah. super corny for the He record, can be, but, okay. but at least he, but John uses really direct language from the when John Cena wants to resonate a point, make you feel it in your soul, John can do that. Touche. No, you're not wrong. You're you're right you know? on that, actually. Yeah, like, you're right. I, like, and I mean this, I'm not okay. This is not me saying, oh, wrestling fans are dumb, wrestling fans are uneducated. Yes, I'm you are. Saying that. He's saying it. Yes, he is. Asterisk, yes, he is. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> And I know this because I'm a colorful, flowery, 25 cent language kind of guy, right? Sometimes the most effective words are the simplest words because everybody, it's not that they understand them, everybody feels them. They get them. That's why simple language is important. A lot of times people get in their head and try and dress something up too much because they want to sound intelligent. It just doesn't work. Same token, The Rock needs to get a thesaurus. If I hear walking clown emoji, you clown. No, you clown he shoes, broke it. Bozo. No, 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 no. He <laughs> broke it. He broke it. He called him cringe. I was so proud of him. Yeah, yeah I was, was going to say. <laughs> walking cringe. I was so impressed with that. I was so happy. Yeah. <laughs> the most Somebody cutting edge sm- playing of 15 years ago. They smartened him up to clown emoji. I was so proud yeah. of him. And... And again, we disagree on the Rock one. I thought he just killed it last week on SmackDown. It was so repetitive, though. And Roman, time out. With the, yeah. wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Oh, the song was good. Yeah, the song was good. Continue, man. The, the the John Morant part was the best part, just for the record. <laughs> right. Um, and, met, and and made him a heel. But like Rise, we talk offline. We can share with the folks, right? Yeah. How many times have I said, "Is Rock really being a heel right now?" He's not. Mm-hmm. He's getting pops nonstop. Oh, but he's really, he made, he cut his teeth in Memphis, man. I don't give a shit if he cut his teeth in Memphis. Your job is to be the heel. You are this humongous superstar, not just in like Hollywood, but in wrestling and everywhere. People want this guy to run for president. He's as popular as it gets. He yeah. needs to cut the mic. No more smell what the rock is cooking. No more all of his catchy like hook line phrases. If he really wanted to be a heel about it, don't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, I would say that was the only problem I had with his promo last week. Was he? That yeah, he's in too Memphis. entertaining. He's too he's, funny. He's too entertaining. Yeah. And and he just you, you watch him. It's like he's you know we said this on the last episode. He's just so alpha. <laughs> you oh, know God. that oh, God. that God. other God people up, can't. Raj. Keep... <laughs> Raj, he eats them up alive. Yeah. The I Rock mean, is so alpha, he's bald, and he's trying to sell you hair care products now. That's some alpha, alpha shit. What's it called? Papa Tui. What are you Papa Tui. plug right now? Papa yeah. Tui Scarekin line. I watch on Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. That's I mean, how old this guy is. Shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> like <laughs> He's that over. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, he's, no, it's he's good. awesome. Um, but I want to talk about last night on SmackDown, because so what's mm-hmm. interesting is we had the Rock concert last week. This Friday, no Rock Daily Fuck Your Story affirmation on social media. <laughs> because, he's gonna be on, because he's going to be on Raw, so I'm guessing he's okay. saving it for, for, for Monday. Monday. Yeah. But this was uh, super weird last night. Raj has his little... I'm, I'm, I'm not yeah. <laughs> I was uh, like, I was really sad, but I'm like, maybe Monday. So Roman <laughs> comes out last night, and Cody comes out last night, and these guys had a debate. I felt like I was back in debate class in high school where, you know, Roman's like, now I want to say you're number two. That's not an insult to be. Number two is a very high level. Like it was, yes. it was like watching. Uh, it was very yes. weird uh, to have them going back and forth with point so, counterpoint. So here's my pro- great point, uh, Glenn. Great, great point, actually. So I thought the same thing. Here's the, this is what I've been saying all along, and this is where I wish I learned how to upload videos so I can put them on our gigantic pop videos, uh, or your podcast, rather, and YouTube channel, but I am slower than molasses, so my apologies. But, like, I haven't seen this from forever. Because Rock is so smooth, because he's so cool, because he's the modern, oops, modern-day uh, Arthur Fonzarelli, 
um, for folks that were in the 80s like me and Glenn and Raj will understand that, um, <laughs> that he. Oh, that's frozen for me. Yeah. He'll be back in a second, folks. Uh, so Monday. If oh, but we're is, one... oh, can you see me? Now we got you, Matt. Start it again. You. you froze. Sorry, guys. So because Rock is always so cool at anything he says, he can go out and take a dump in the middle of the ring and everybody say, oh, my God, that's the best thing ever because it's The Rock did it. So, like, this is what I go back to that, like, I would have taken all of his catchphrases out of it and just stood in the back. I know it would be hard for him, but stand in the background behind Roman because Roman is the one that is our universal champion. He's the one who's been on a three-plus-year run. He's the one that's has destiny with, you know, history, right, potentially. And Cody's not facing The Rock on night two of WrestleMania. He's facing Roman. And I watched a really good Roman promo on uh, with uh, Pat McAfee on SportsCenter and the Pat McAfee show. And Roman brought it all back. But I'm worried the WWE Universe did not see that interview. And so when Roman's in the ring with Cody... Roman needed to hit a lot harder than what he did in that uh, potential that that not potential, but in that one on one promo, in my opinion. Hmm. I think and this is a criticism of everything with WrestleMania and WWE PLEs in general. It's very hard to get the right balance to where you go. Oh, I wish they had another week to tell this story better or mm. oh, this should be one week shorter and it would be that much more exciting. But they need to imp- let me give you an example. Drew McIntyre is, I just was on his Twitter today looking like a stalker, but whatever, I don't care. Uh, he's gold on Twitter. Yeah. And if I'm WWE, I'm going, dude, we don't need you to go out the ring cut a promo. We're just going to show your video of you close gripping 350 pounds like it's no big deal and mocking CM Punk's torn tricep. We're yeah. just going to air that because that does so much talking for you. Um, little things like that, like WWE should be smart enough, up to date enough to be able to make that judgment call, right? Yeah. So they need to do this all around. Like with Roman Reigns on the Pat McAfee show, he spit some real good truth about, look, you guys keep saying John Cena, John Cena is on like the Mount Rushmore. That's cool. If that's what you think he's had what, 14, 15 title reigns, 16 title reigns. Great. How many of them have been longer for my current title reign? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Zero, zero. I'll take uh what do you say? Quality oh, uh, substance uh, over what do you say? Um, uh, uh, quality over quantity, basically. That's it. That's what he said, and I agreed with him on that. Yeah, that I mean, that's what that's the thing I used to have with like Hogan and Ric Flair back in the day, where people would be like, "Oh, Ric Flair is held a title this many times." I'm like, "Yeah," because Hogan doesn't get beat. That's even that's way better, you know. Like that is way better. Yeah. So. Being I've 15 seen, time champion means you've lost it 15 times or 14 times, you know. So it kind of does. <laughs> uh, real quick, I wanted to make a quick correction. Uh, thanks to Sean Gardner. Rock won't be on Raw till oh. April first. That's right. CM Punk is on Monday night and That's then Rock right. is on. But... Wait, wait, slow down. Is Punk's coming? Yeah, 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 it's in Chicago. So yeah. <laughs> sorry. It's yeah. interesting that with so everything smart. with the Rock and Roman and Cody and bringing Cody's family and his dad and his mom into it. The Brandy hasn't been mentioned, but I, I you know, I think I know the reason mm. why. I do too, one, because it gets Cody heat. Keep her well, out of it, Cody. Trust me. Yeah. No, if she gets involved, one, she is not going to put up with any bullshit, but it's going to make Cody look super like beta male if Brandy yes. upstages him. Yeah. yeah. Yes, he will. He looked like made it. Okay. And I should have led with this. He looked beta male. When he had his amazingly beautiful dog, by the way. God, that dog is gorgeous with blue eyes. Um, but with going into his episode, what was it? Was it was it, was it, was it Raw that night that Cody rebutted? What, was, was, yeah, it was Raw, sorry. Yeah. Um, with his dog had a scarf and said, Rock is a cat. <laughs> Good one, oh, Cody. Good job. Yeah, that, Good job. That, 
that was cringe. <laughs> Super cringe. And then, then like somebody said, no, but Matt, Matt, don't you get it? Somebody on Twitter like direct messaged me. Matt, don't you get it? He's saying that rocks a B I T C H. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I said that wrong. P U S S Y. Don't you get it? A cat? I'm like, <laughs> yes, I got it. It was still horribly cringe. Right. And and again, it's not him doing the tough guy talking we need him to do right now. I need Cody for one second to just pretend he's a tough guy. Just for one second. Yeah. He go back to his banker outfit. He can give me a loan. He can do all that other ish. <laughs> but we need him right now. He's not wearing a suit. He's pissed. He's wearing a workout outfit like Punk did in that promo. Come out pissed off. And just deliver a, a, a just KO to rock verbally. Yeah. And he kind of um, did that in AEW. Remember that one, at one time he went back to his hair being dyed black or yes. his, his hair being black and, yes. and trying to trying to come off more intense. It didn't quite work there, but I, it was like better than that. It, yeah, exactly. Something where he's out of his suit and tie and just really all business and comes off as a threat. Like he's really yeah. there to, to hurt the So rock. let me play devil's advocate for both of you. So I did get on the suit in the Roger, Re not Roger, Re what am I saying? But the banker freaking look that he had with his three-piece suit. It was not just a suit, guys. It's a three-piece suit, as you see, um, with a sweet pocket watch. Nobody wears it. There's a pocket watch, Cody. Nobody wears it, but whatever. Um, he just needs, a, like, a cigar yes, pipe. Guys. <laughs> and a monocle. Guys, and a monocle. <laughs> Yeah, don't want to tongue from my <laughs> sweet arms, water I'm drinking. BCA is so, but but listen, both of you guys, let me ask you guys an honest question. Did you not want to see Cody come out with like I hate to make it so material, but did you not want to see him come out with something different? I think he could change it up a little bit. Yeah. It's just for the it, one response. He talked about his yeah. mama. His mom. Yeah. There's a lot that I think he could have done. Just to change it up a bit. If it's starting to feel now a little like too much is happening in the ring, which is weird to say. I know they want that live pop for the crowd yes. to get invested. But yes. um, and I think in a weird way, Roman, see, I, I keep swinging back and forth on who I want to win this. But Roman last mm -hmm. night saying, Cody, what are you running for governor? Anyone got a kid wants to do his entrance oh, with him? Anyone money, how to craft? money, money, come back. I love that comeback. Loved it. Yeah. And Roman's so, so natural in his delivery. Like this, this heel era of Roman has been great because he so, just feels like such a, such a true character. He feels and, like that's himself. And brother, anytime he calls him an idiot, it's like, okay. So I did, cause as a former wrestler, I'm watching him grab, we use transitional words to rethink of what we want to say next. Mm -hmm. And if you can't tell when Roman's in the ring with Cody, it's you're an idiot. You're stupid. I'm going to tell you why you're stupid. I'm going to tell you why you're an idiot. But guess what? It holds true. Like, I buy it when he says it. I know it's like, I don't find it a transitional wording for him before he thinks of what he's going to say next. Um, mm -hmm. Because he's so god darn convincing, is Roman, right? Yeah. He, I really believe yeah. he thinks Cody's an idiot. <laughs> but let me ask you guys, devil, devil's advocate. Cody wearing the three piece suit, the sweet pocket watch, um, has gotten him to the dance. It's gotten him to be the mm -hmm. most over baby face in all of pro wrestling, right? So, yeah. am I wrong in saying that in that one comeback promo, he should have worn something different? Like, again, what do you guys think? Yeah, because then it stands out more because he always wears the suit uh, and everything. Uh, the, the one time he comes out, really pissed, really aggressive, a different outfit, whatever, like you said, it's weight clothes or whatever. Um, just just something different. So it just really stands out. You're like, that was the promo where Cody was really pissed. Remember that one promo where he yes. just went off on the rock? I and, do. Uh, yeah. So, 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 that, so that wardrobe would have stood out more if he Glenn, did something else. Glenn, you're way more culturized than I am. I'll admit it. <laughs> do you think, am I being a meathead Matt? Am I being meathead Matt Morgan right now? By saying, I did not want to see him wear the same old, same old coming out. Should that have anything to do with the intensity of his promo and him saying he was going to threaten to kick the Rock's ass? I mean, in some ways, I feel like I'm playing WWE 2K24 and he's got the suit attire and the Homelander attire and that's it. <laughs> 
Um, I, I think I think change is always good. Um, now he doesn't need to be one of those wrestlers who's always wearing a new piece of merch. I think that's kind of overdone. But you know what? Even him in a t-shirt, mm-hmm. though, like casual day Cody, I would pop for right now. That'd be nice to see. <laughs> You make this yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I still gotta go to the gym, dude. Come on, you're killing me. Yeah, I need, these, okay, um, I need but, my BCAAs. You're killing me here. I, I feel you. The branch <laughs> chain amino acids to the layman out there. Um, so let's yeah, talk. Oh, oh, I remember. I'm, I'm taking like ten pills a day and vitamin D droplets and B12 droplets and drinking my let's green go, juice. Glenn. I know. I'm nice, nice. Getting up there, man. <laughs> uh, I understand. Down 28 pounds as of today in the last. Uh, what? Yeah, in the last 10 weeks. So, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Like, record scratch a show. If we had a producer, I can go, <laughs> it would be here. Yeah. Hold up. 28 pounds in the last 10 28 weeks. 28 pounds in the last 10 weeks, yes. Glenn, that's hey. mon, you flipping mental. Yeah, I still got like 30 more to go, 30 or 40 more to go. But uh, yeah, it's been good. But I've been eating just, you know what's funny? I've been, is for people that know, I've been vegan wow. for 20 plus years now. But yeah. I've been very much a junk food vegan and I love bread and pasta. So I've been just doing, sure. you know, lots of salads, lots of kale, uh, lots of, you know, like a white bean stroganoff. It's it's like mushrooms and white beans in a stroganoff sauce. But it's it's very healthy because it's all whole foods. Dude, right? put a little kale in there. I'm right. proud. Can you put a bleeper on? I don't want to yeah. mess us up and okay. demonetize us. But oh, I am you. proud. Of, I would literally say I'm proud as F as you right now. Like yeah, I am, That's insane. 28 pounds? 28, yeah. Yeah, Dude, and, that's and, a part of an, a human. Wow. And, and by that's the way, impressive. I haven't started. I haven't started back with the walking yet and everything because I wanted to get the. This, I consider this the easy weight. The easy that's weight. Diet? The Is that just, yeah, diet? just diet? Okay. Just diet. But Let's you know, go, it, it reminds me, Raj. We know. Remember Chuck from uh, Wink. Chuck lost yeah. like a hundred pounds, and I was talking with him. Now, Chuck, you look at him now and you go, wow, you're such a thin guy. And I'm like, oh, you're vegan. And I would be like, oh, you need to go to this vegan restaurant, this vegan restaurant. And he's like, I eat only whole vegetables <laughs> and, and and like here's the most annoying thing about vegans and about diet people and about a lot of this stuff and matt you know oh, this is nutrition person. yeah but you know the most annoying thing about some of this stuff is the sure. simplest truth is what works and it sucks because we all want to figure out the little hacks of oh i'm gonna eat this and it uh, it tastes yeah you know what i mean like I and do. it's like no just eat some more kale eat some beans it's really not that hard you know, um, I do. Once you start doing cardio, day, once you, know? you start doing cardio, brother, yeah. you'll get those next twenty easily, like that. Yeah. Congrats, yeah. man. That's a that's a huge deal. So, congrats. That's an- thirty pounds. That's insane. Yeah. Well, but remember, guys, when we started doing this eight years ago, I was at like two fifteen, and then I fluctuated over the years. Like I went up, down, but I was I was at my lowest. How tall are you? How tall? I'm five eleven. So, okay. yeah. So two fifteen for me is like that's about. I've never gotten below, like my body will not let me go below 200 pounds. Even when I was working out all the time, yeah, Matt, even yeah, when I was yeah, doing yeah. everything, 200 is my That's floor. It responds to, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. And that was when I was doing body for life, six small meals a day, hydroxy cut twice a day, couldn't get below 200. Yeah. Never worked. My favorite so, fat uh, burner of all time. <laughs> oh, it's, it was, so it's, it's yeah. Nobody's more they pissed off that, right? I was so angry at that. All because a high school <laughs> kid took that and did not do it properly. Yeah, went on a treadmill for eight hours running, and their heart exploded. Oh, it was the best fat burner of all time, Raj. I swear to you. Ah! No, I, I I used it uh, a couple times back in the day. My my so wife's good. family used to own a couple GNC, so we'd get ah. that stuff for free. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I wish I was your friend then. <laughs> yeah, Matt, you, you collecting your GNC points for discounts still? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> I drove around. This is like what a mark I am about with just the weirdest stuff. I drove around to GNC's uh, because it was like, oh, do you have the new ghost flavor? It was like, I really want yeah. the strawberry bubblicious. So I went to like eight GNC's till I found it. For folks that don't know what we're talking about, that thing was that godsend of flavors. Yeah. He's not wrong. <laughs> There's so much good stuff. Uh, okay, but I want to talk about. Um, Let's go back. We got some super chats and we're going to talk about WrestleMania rundown here. So mm-hmm. Bigfoot Sneakerhead. Buck 99, thank you, uh, sir, saying, hey, guys, hope we talk about X-Men 97. That launches this week. I have not watched it yet. I'm looking forward to that. I have. You watched oh, the you new did? one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yes. Yeah. It's, in the, it's in the theaters or is no, it? No, it's on Disney Plus, and it's a continuation of the X-Men animated series from the 90s. They just picked yeah. right up where that left off with a new season. So smart. So smart. Have you guys seen Roadhouse yet? 
The new one? No. Yes, I have. Are you, are you watching the new one already? Yes. How was it? it? Good. I thought it was a friggin' incredible. They did a very good justice of okay. its former counterpart. However, because I'm old, I'm always gonna be, you know, more heartfelt toward its original, right? Well, it's Patrick Swayze who's come on, who's awesome. Yeah, come on. I just I just watched the first Roadhouse a, a couple of weeks ago, it's, and that's another <laughs> one where no, I was no, like, no, you're not, Rock, Glenn. Do not. I got to use the bathroom. No. Do not let him slip away in that. Kill him. For okay. That. Kill him. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Roadhouse is a classic. I remember seeing Roadhouse as uh, when it came out, which I guess we would have been like 14, maybe. And I was just like, this is like really kind of adult for an action movie. Yeah. As a child, that was my reaction. I was just like, what is going on here? There's yeah. a lot of violence and nudity and, and meanness. Uh, and yeah. But like It was kind of like the end of a great action era where you didn't have all the CGI and all the... Uh, you, you know, it was like that Stallone Schwarzenegger, the, the kind of like the ending of that era. It was, uh, it came out in an awesome time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, and Swayze was just, I mean, dude, Ghost, Point Break, Dirty Dancing, like he was just on a run then. But that was know? a wild run. Yeah, yeah. Although I never saw Next to Kin. I heard Next to Kin is okay. Like, hey, yeah, guys, I'm asking you a question. Back to yeah. the original. Did you not think uh, what was the guy's name? His his partner in that film. Did you not like get vibes of Kevin Nash? Oh, oh Sam yeah. Elliott. Yeah. Is that his name? Sam Elliott, the actor, the older guy, right? I always got vibes of Kevin Nash yeah. with that character. As Wade yeah. Garrett. Yeah. But like like a thin like a thin Kevin Nash. And much shorter, but but yeah, like gray the hair. Gray haired and could f you up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, he was I'm awesome glad about too. Sam Elliott in general. I think Sam Elliott could kick any of our asses. Yeah. Okay. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, Ryan Muhammad, uh, oh, 199 pounds. Thank you. Uh, Punk could do the Ace Steel promo to Cody in Chicago. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, like, you're like, so, all right. Ryan Muhammad is going to make me pick between my two favorite, like, Mark Boy fans I'm the biggest fan of. Um, I would pick Punk over them, but if I'm being honest, though. So I'm all in favor of that because I want to see CM Punk hit a grand slam on his out with WWE. I do. Once well, that point, Ryan also says CM Punk is WWE's number one face attraction and Cody's the face of the company. Uh, I don't know about that anymore, man. The, like, um, if you look at the quarter yeah. hours when, Co when Cody is on, the, ro the quarter hours on Raw shoot up like they're all, yeah. like a they, lot. Like he was easily the high points of the show, and so, so CM Punk. But so so you're, so Rise. So I use my neighbor. His name is Zayden. Mm -hmm. Zayden is only ten. Uh, no, he's twelve. He's twelve years old, and he always will come over and be like, "Hey, can you beat up?" And he will name the hot uh, uh, flavor of the month WWE wrestler to me. <laughs> and he's been doing this for the last like five or six years. And finally, he came to me with with uh, Cody Rhodes. I'm like, no, I love Cody Rhodes. I, I I do not think I could beat up Cody Rhodes just to make him love Cody Rhodes more, right? Obviously, in a rough fight, I would wipe the floor with you, Cody Rhodes. But nonetheless, <laughs> um, because of his, you know, it, it, like him being a fan, I don't want to mess that for him. But I'm like, no, Cody Rhodes is the ish, uh, is what I tell him. However, yeah. CM Punk, different ball game for me because I do want Punk came up in my era and I do want to see him finish his own, not to be a cornball story, uh, in his WWE chapter, so to speak. I want to see him become a Hall of Famer. And, and to get there, I do think he needs one big run in WWE to make it happen. He, he should have it happen no matter what. But if you're making me choose between Punk and Cody with a gun to my head, I'm choosing uh, Punk. I just think. Yeah, yeah, and I will say, uh, uh, Punk has been looking great too uh, on his Instagram already. He's, I think, he's already got his cast off. He's, uh, he's. I need working to follow out. him. I don't yeah, yeah, follow I think him he, on Instagram. I think he'll be back by SummerSlam with the way he's going. So, uh, Drew's all over it though. By the way, cause I, I didn't know. know. <laughs> Uh, Drew's uh, trolling uh, abilities are, are like, so time. great. No, guys, I'm not exaggerating. He is. The, I follow. I gave him a follow on Twitter the other day, simply because I told him, "I go, you are you're the smartest wrestler in the world right now that knows how to promote yourself while crapping on 
those in which you want to work against. And he does it better than anybody. I don't know why the other wrestlers don't do it like him. Yeah. Yeah. He is great. And uh, man, I would love to see Drew win that title at WrestleMania and have him. Me too. Him punk. Yeah, Me at, too. At SummerSlam. I'm with uh, you on that. Co- that it'll point. Be a big win. Yeah, we're going to talk about uh, something related to that in a second. But the out of pocket variety show, $5, saying, problem is Cody's a white meat baby face by nature. But think about the hottest faces the past 25 years. How many of them were white meat baby faces? Uh, you can't say Tina Hogan. In the last 25 well, years? No. Yes, Raj is correct. No, Raj, you're correct. G- give me more. Who? Cena? Yes. Sting? Well, that, I guess that's no. going back 30 years. No. That's going no. back 30 no. years. Wait, wait, 25 years. What year is 25 years ago? 1999. So Sting, what? 98, I thought, but okay. Um. Yeah, But he was not the white meat baby face by that point. Like, he was the crow then. I mean, like, Surfer Sting was Good that white point. meat baby face. Great point, Raj. Yeah. So, yeah, I seen a, uh, is definitely at the the top there. Roman was for a little bit, but uh, that didn't work. <laughs> no, it didn't work. And people don't like what do, like they don't want white meat baby faces. I'm sorry, it's just it's just a fact. They want that twinge, not twinge between the characters being gray versus white or black, right, bad or good. They want it. They they want something that's believable. And, mm-hmm. and no offense to Roman, he wasn't believable as that shield baby face. No. He wasn't there yet. He's believable as F as villain Roman, though. God, he's so talented and good. Yeah. So this pivots to what we're going to talk about next. Uh, T. Smitty 3000, $5 super chat. Thank you, uh, T. Smitty. Uh, the women's story on SmackDown has been awesome. We're getting Bianca Naomi and Jade versus yes. Game Control. Bianca not following Bailey's a nice touch. I like that last Very night. Very good. Mm-hmm. Very good. Very amazing layer. To that storyline, I no, love. I agree. It. And for those that go, oh, that was just a throwaway. No, it was not. Um, it was not a throwaway. No, right. seriously, Naomi dragging uh, uh, um, uh, Bianca out of this scene to let us. We we, were, we weren't left with a definitive. What's going to happen here? Mm-hmm. Right. I yeah. thought that was yeah. genius. It was awesome, and it's a very good onion layer. And then right after that, they had the Jade Cargill. A, you know, vignette, which I thought was really well done. And so. she'll be there on next Friday. So that's going to be interesting if she's the late addition to this match, because this Oof. is going to mean that Oof. it's not because you could do the Kabuki Warriors versus Naomi and Bianca. Like, right. That makes all the sense on Earth. But making but, it involving Dakota Kai, making a damage control versus Naomi, Bianca and Jade. I mean, if Asuka's not so, cleared because I know she had an injury uh, a week ago, um, so, that's how you go get around that. So Obviously, without saying Jed Cargill needs to go over and needs to go over flipping strong. Yeah. 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 And they're, they're definitely, you know, she's definitely wrestling. Yeah. Whether it's that match or, or something else that you don't introduce what her to, on SmackDown, you know, weeks well, before WrestleMania. Unless you've got so here's, I hope so. I hope so. Don't curse us. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> so here's the crazy thing. Here's what I got for the match rundown for Mania. I got Bailey versus EO, Becky versus Rhea, Cody versus mm. Roman. Mm. Cody Seth versus Rock Roman, Drew uh, versus Seth, Gunther uh, versus Sammy, Jimmy yeah. versus Jay, uh, Judgment Day probably versus Awesome Truth and someone else. Uh, the Kabuki Warriors as of today versus Naomi and Bianca. That'll probably be yeah. versus Jade. LA Knight versus AJ Styles. Logan versus RKO versus KO. So that's eleven that are confirmed or more or less Bangers. confirmed and Bangers. then i think because we got santos versus ray last night i think we get lwo versus legato and that gives dominic something to do with legato oh, given that he showed up last night I... well because judgment days in the tag Glenn, match Rhea... try to rationalize that. don't try to rationalize that. okay you rhea's got her match best. well it's going to be ray and dominic on opposite sides they don't do that angle last they're night they're not really together on screen anymore uh, or, or, or Ray, uh, Ray, uh, Ray, not Ray. Yeah. Sorry, uh, not Rhea. Um, so yeah, I think uh, Ray and Dominic. Yeah, Ray with the LWO, Dominic with Santos. Um, yeah. that's fine. Uh, what what about poor JD McDonough? He's got nothing to do. He's the only Judgment Day member without a WrestleMania plan. I don't he'll care. In, no, <laughs> he'll be in someone's I, corner. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Every other yeah. match you said was a banger in your terminology, Glenn. 
um, mm -hmm. banger of banger of banger matches. Every match you just listed was like mm -hmm. flipping awesome. And, and there's they probably going to be a women's tag match with, you know, with a they of need to do more for specifically Dom. I'm sorry. He needs know, a future match. And I'm sorry. He needs to go over too. Yeah. This is they could have done hard. Dom. They could have done, done Dom versus Ray with some stip, like if. But they uh, didn't. They just have them against each other last win. year. He yeah, yeah, win. but they never did it again, which was crazy. That yeah, first, yeah, a match with so much heat, and they never went back to it. So if they no. went back to it with a stip, um, yep. You know, yeah, I, I I'm think with it, you. It could be big. Thomas, good lord, heat! Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I couldn't pay the fans like independently. There's ten bucks. Please boo the shit out of me. Like, I could never get that kind of heat yeah. that Dom yeah. gets. Nobody yeah. could. Right. I'm sorry. I mean, you need to make money with that. I think Priest is going to cash in and fail Sunday night Ooh. against Drew. So, listen, Veggie Gamer, not, uh, sorry, no one remembers Damien's Money in the Bank briefcase case anymore. Hugs and kisses, or whatever the hell that means. Um, <laughs> I agree. I keep forgetting. I'll be the first yeah. to admit, I do keep forgetting it. I don't think it's happening here because of the fact that it's going to be Seth versus um, Drew McIntyre, and Drew McIntyre will win that title. No question about it in my mind, and it should happen that way. And I think WWE will F everything up if you have him cash in and then beat Drew for the, the, the championship. I think that's stupid. Drew is red hot. And if these clown box, I sound like rock right here. If these <laughs> idiots at WWE would just take two seconds to take just one, two, or three tweets from Drew McIntyre and don't even put Drew out on the show, just put Drew's tweets on the show. It, it takes less time to do it. It'll get him more over and it'll make him more hated. And I don't know why they're not doing it, Raj. Why aren't they doing it? I, I, I just think right now with with priest at least I, I feel like it's just not his time right now with, it's with not the, he's not the ready yet. the title picture yeah i'll say he, he's not ready yet he's not there he's almost there he's as close to the finish line as you can get yeah but he's not there yet not over drew he's not yeah right. mm. yep exactly and so yep. it just you don't want to muddy those waters because drew should be champion for an extended period of time and and, and mm -hmm. the people they have at the top are the people that should be there right now it, yes, Damien's sir. not quite there to to enter that that uh, that realm. And I'm not saying this is a kiss ass. I'm saying it because he is the truth. He is so. Uh, I'm not trying to be like make a pun there, but he is that talented. He is that good. He's just not there yet to championship level, unless it's a fluke type of championship in which he wins it and somebody beats him. Like no, you don't yeah. want that for him. Mm -hmm. He he's he's fought so hard to get here. So you know. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like this idea. Uh, Pre should just lose a one on one cash in match at Money in the Bank. Yeah, yeah. Challenge him at Money in the Bank. Say my one year's up. I challenge you to a one on one match. That's your world title main event. But there's no element of surprise there. But we don't. Yeah, need but, it. we don't always know, need it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. By not always needing it, Glenn, it adds to the element of surprise for future uh, briefcase winners. Right? It does. Yeah. That just so, that seems so above the board for Judgment Day. It does, but, uh, unless they're turning Damien Priest babyface because mm. they've been teasing them breaking up for a while. So okay. that that's one way to go about. That's it. That's true. That's true. That is true. Yeah, it's it's exciting. I can't believe two weeks away from Mania, and We're it's a stack cover... card. You you're yeah. running down that that card, and it's like it's Dude, it's loaded. all dream all dream matches to Mark Matt here. <laughs> all dream like I, all those matches. I'm like, oh, I like you can hear my. Uh, Internet orgasm over each. <laughs> and you, you know, the only thing that can happen that can make it better is if Shane McMahon makes a surprise appearance and redeems himself for last year. As Calls out as Snoop. Well. Time <laughs> yeah. out. No, what what, wait, I, that went right over my head. What do you mean? Wait, remember what? last year Shane McMahon made a surprise appearance, busted his quad, tore his quad. I remember that. Snoop, Snoop had to finish the segment by like... And pin the Miz, right? The it Miz. Was the Miz. So... <laughs> Not being a jerk here, we don't need any McMahons having know, anything to do with this mania. Peace, kick rocks. Yes. Thank you for everything you did for our business, but yeah, yeah, yeah. there's the door. Yeah. yeah. You can bring Raw Underground back, but, but you you have to, to, <laughs> Glenn. You, you've got to find something for CM Punk to do, though. Like, I, I don't know if you have a special oh, ref in that he, Drew match or. 
in the very least commentary because he's commentary gold. Yeah. He yeah. gives us nugget after nugget of pop. Yeah. And hearing him in that stadium getting that pop, he, he, they've got to do something. Yeah. Well, Guest well, host. Well, I, man, I don't, I don't Ross, know if that fits his character, but yeah. Rise, before we leave, no, he's not going to be Samoa Joe rocking the poncho in the middle of the rain <laughs> in Tampa. So let me ask you this. Raj, how would you book Sam Punk? He's coming. You said that he's, he's coming back in Chicago, right? Yeah. And he's how teasing you, he's going to do something at Mania. Your perfect booking. You have the pen, Raj. How would you book it? So, so this is one way you could do it is that you he's on commentary for a few matches right they introduce mm-hmm. him he's caught on commentary for the seth rollins drew mcintyre match they get into it no no no, then, no 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 i'm sorry i'm not my apologies no, not really? mania the chicago show before him i'm sorry oh i think he just cuts a pro- i think all he can do he can't do anything physical right now so he just cuts a promo says he's going to be at mania uh drew comes out and then uh, Seth comes out for the save, and Seth and Drew go at it. But you know something, okay. like, something like that, just so you you get Punk saying he'll be at Mania, and that's that's all you do. Yeah. You keep that Drew thing going as well, because we need it from Punk's perspective to keep it going. Because Drew has done a masterful job, <laughs> like legit master's class on how to maintain a storyline with somebody who got injured and nobody's talking about right now, right? <laughs> yeah. God, he's so good on Twitter. God, I love his tweets. That's a lost art, too, when people would get injured and they just disappeared off TV and the wrestlers would keep it going, like in the yes. 80s and 90s. They, you know, yes. they would keep those feuds alive. But yes. they stopped doing that. Now they're able to do that. I think that's great. So I popped huge because I'm watching everything that is Drew. And um, I watched his promo talking about he tried to give us the history of pro wrestling. But before he did... <laughs> He said, but all you fools in the audience don't even know your own American history. So <laughs> I popped huge for that. Huge. That was great. Because he's coming across as a jerk. Yeah. Right? And doing his part to be the heel the whole way through it. And then he gave us the legit wrestling history saying, like, look, we started in carnivals. We were carny folk. And then right. we started, you know, uh, wrestling in, um, not VFW, what did he say? Um the same thing as VFW halls, smoky VFW halls, and then eventually we uh, had sellout stadiums, right? Yeah. And I popped for that because he did give the proper pro wrestling history, um, <laughs> yeah. while still bagging on the business and and the fans. I like, I just, I'm a huge. <laughs> I did not think I would be it, but I'm yeah. a huge Drew McIntyre marker at this moment. Nice Especially time. when Drew first came back to WWE, he, he was just paired with Dolph Ziggler, and he didn't have oh. like a personality. They were just calling him the Scottish psychopath, and he, he was always, just intense. He but, always had that personality, though. It's yeah, it just didn't, they weren't bringing it out. Yeah, it's their job to bring it. You just hit it on the head. It's their job to bring it out. It's like spend two minutes with the guy, yeah. talk to him, and say, "Hey, look, you were the chosen one, the re re chosen one." Shout out Jeff Jarrett, right? Um, and, <laughs> and 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 we're bringing you back. What's different now? They should have asked right. him that. Yeah, yeah. And he would have given them. I, I promise you, as somebody who left the company, went to TNA for seven years, and got the main. Hang on, where's my? There we go. Main event experience that Johnny Ace and Vince wanted me to get because they couldn't book me as an undercard talent or as a mid card talent because I'm too big. Okay, great, good story. I got it in TNA, and when I was coming back to WWE in uh, 2014 and debut, re-debuting in the Royal Rumble. Um, I can speak from experience that there is a whole bunch of years of experience that you have under your belt that makes you grizzled in a good way, mm-hmm. and you have a whole ish a lot to say on the subject. And they yeah, should yeah. be putting a mic in front of Drew's face nonstop. Because Drew lost his dream job and then got it back through working his ass off, working on the indies. They're missing so much with him. It's not even funny. Yeah. And I'm just hoping he resigned because he is just doing the best. Oh, me too. Me too. I'm me sure too. he does before he wins that title. Yeah. But, 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 Glenn, he's the one and only heel that I can honestly go. How's he the heel? He's making sense. I agree <laughs> yeah. with every word yeah. he, this guy says. Those are the that best was, villains. That makes some good are. points. 
You hit yep. it on the head, Glenn. So, like, he's constantly hitting on the head with, like, hey, uh, um, Seth Rollins, why are you constantly being a mark for what's going on on SmackDown? You need to be a Raw champion, homeboy. Yeah. If I was a Raw, and he makes perfect sense. Everything he says, I'm like, Jack, Jack, Jack. <laughs> I agree. Mm-hmm. So both nights of WrestleMania, we'll be covering it. Are we doing stand and deliver, guys? Are you going to wake up early that NXT What the hell is morning? the timeout? What is stand and deliver? <laughs> That's the NXT PLE before Mania. They do it, though, in the morning. They call their no, 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 no. They call their <laughs> PLE stand and deliver. No, the Mania weekend one. They don't use takeover for everything anymore because it was getting out of hand. There were too many takeovers. There were like... I like takeover. I like takeover stand too. And deliver. Well, well they, they have, have a couple. Deliver, they are, they got Vengeance Day. They got stand and deliver. They Glenn, got in your house. Glenn, Glenn, yeah. I like in your house. I'm a huge mark for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great callback. Many one just became stand and deliver. I don't know, man. I didn't choose this. Great American I'm not, Bash I'm not yelling, the summer. Okay, so my apologies. I'm yeah. not yelling at you for that, but stand and deliver. Yeah, it's been years now. Yes. Okay, but okay. So we got Tony D'Angelo going for the NXT title against Dragon. Your favorite wrestler of all time. Oh, Your Tony favorite wrestler of all. Time. Tony's going to be NXT. Screw champion. the Rock, but Tony D'Angelo. Tony no, D'Angelo. Forget, no, 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 Rock. Forget Rock. Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, Sting, Ric um, Flair. Did any Tony of them? D'Angelo's his boy. Did any of them come out to the ring, palm the ref a twenty dollar bill, and say, "Get yourself a little something nice before the match"? That's what does it for you. That's amazing. <laughs> That's character work, Matt. You don't need a character because you're huge. And when they gave you a character, it diminished your hugeness. I, I Ted DiBiase it. got a referee to get plastic surgery. So that uh, paid the pay, the referee off that way. But, so to that Glenn's, was... <laughs> but to Glenn's point, maybe I could have used that character. He's not wrong. <laughs> That's a little more, you know? Uh, and yes, now sir. he's got a consigliere, the D'Angelo family. He's got a lawyer. There was a lawyer character in NXT, and he just joined the D'Angelo family. He's the Tom Hagen oh, of the D'Angelo I, I, family. I thought I was watching this. I need to catch up. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, what if, what if uh, we instead we do after SmackDown? Because oh, that's going to be a loaded SmackDown. And then we just do both. We do we talk the – Well, I'm not going to be here the, the SmackDown before Mania. I have tickets to see Charo, and that's been a lifelong dream. Uh, so I'm going Charo? to see Charo. That's right. <laughs> Wait, give Doing me that song. Doing that SmackDown. Nobody knows a Charo song. She plays the guitar and she goes coochie coochie and she's adorable. Coochie coochie on the love yeah, boat. You know yeah, you know Charo. Yeah, exactly. The love boat. Yeah. She's still alive and she looks amazing. So Does look, she? she doesn't tour that often. So I'm going Friday night Charo. before Mania. Yeah, instead of SmackDown, I'm doing that. Hashtag Charo. Yeah, in Vegas. <laughs> so no, but stand yeah. deliver. Stand delivers that Saturday morning, Raj, before Mania. Oh, and there's time to cover it in between. You don't have to show up, but Matt, if you watch it, or maybe Issa and I'll do it. Maybe we'll bring Issa. Hey, 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 no, 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 no. Good try. Good try. Maybe Matt, me, you, and Issa will do it. It'll be fun. You're so desperate to get Issa on here. And I'm not desperate. I'm not uh, disrespecting you because I love Issa. Wow. Too. Oh, wow. Let's do all three of us. Okay, I'll, I'm down. I love. I'm, I'm gonna stand and deliver. Is gonna be. Good. And by the way, we're getting Carmelo Hayes versus Trick Williams. No oh, title. Huge, 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 Just huge storyline. I agree with that. Lira, Lira Valkyria versus Roxanne Perez, which will be good. I think we're that gonna get Thea Hale versus J.C. Jane, though. The story they've been building in Chase U. That I'm looking forward to. You love um, Chase U way more. I love Chase U. I, Chase I think so Chase U is so corny. No offense. Same. No offense. No offense. I thought it was at first, but it grew on me. Finally, I was like, I gave in. To what they were doing. So, Glenn, <laughs> may I ask you? Yeah. Go ahead, Raj. Sorry. Go ahead, Raj. I, I was going to say, ahead. it's like if you if you took the varsity club and then made them not look like athletes. Except Andre yes. Chase, it turned out, was betting on matches, bankrupted his university. Uh, JC <laughs> came in and did a Women of Chase U calendar to raise money <laughs> to bail out Chase U. The, again, this is storytelling, Raj. That is. This is... <laughs> It is story. Okay. Yeah. So you just told 90% of the audience watching this show right now, this podcast, something they had no clue about yeah. because it doesn't draw them enough to watch it, pay attention to what you just said. Yeah. So what you just said is, okay, that's that. I'm not going to lie. It's a TV what, show, man. It's a TV show. But, 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 but listen to me. What you just described is pretty flipping funny and entertaining. But um, overall, like the payoff with what it used to, here's the problem. Everybody like me is going to compare NXT to what it once was. Sure. That's yeah. the problem. The wrestling's listen still great. Me. Listen to me. I'm down to be on a show with you and Issa. I'm yeah. in. I'm in. I'll watch. I'll do it. 
Um, but no, look, NXT, the wrestling is still phenomenal. The only thing they changed in this quote unquote 2.0 era mm -hmm. is they're focusing more on doing colorful characters and more storylines, which by the way, before are the they more colorful? Era, are they more colorful? Yes. And by the I, way, before the undisputed era, in my opinion, made NXT AEW light. NXT oof, used to be this way. Oof. Back uh, with Tyler oh. Breeze doing his stuff. Back with Enzo and Cass. Like they did have big characters did, did. on that show. Did, well, did. I think oh. I think that I think a big difference now is what they're doing is it's more developmental. Where sure. it's not they're not bringing in Nakamura's and and Finn Balor's and Joe Cole's and Joe well, the club, uh, Gals and Anderson are back in there. Baron Corbin like, is doing great work with Braun. Wait, Breaker. Gals and Anderson are on it. Yeah, they're back in NXT. Wow, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. So. Baron but, Corbin has been but as, having a peak with. Oh, Rome I, I've sure. been watching Baron Corbin. I yeah. agree with that. I agree with that. Right. right, but as far as bringing in like established talent and using mm -hmm. them, you know, they they've kind of stopped doing that, and they're bringing in main roster guys, which mm -hmm. they've always done. But as far as bringing in people from the outside and really relying on them for a long period of time, which I think is to, good to make their debut, Raj. Though that's the difference here. Nakamura coming to NXT to debut and have these. Gangbuster matches. He, with he was there a long time. He, but yeah, he was there a long Zane. time. Bobby Roode, there a long time. Oh, you know, Alistair Black. Man. You had all these guys that were ready that they took oh. forever to bring up. But they had great matches with. They did. And Adam Cole, they never brought up. Well, <laughs> and I actually think the track record for the 2.0 era, uh, Grayson Waller, Austin Theory, Tiffany Stratton, they haven't Oof. all been winners, but the, lately they're on a roll with these cars. They're all winners. What, what do you mean? Yeah. Winners? Those no, no, I'm saying all... those three are winners. I'm saying everyone else hasn't been. Well, Cameron Grimes hasn't translated well the main roster. I don't know how he hasn't. That's on them to figure it out yeah. because he's got all the talent in the world. He's as charismatic mm -hmm. as days come. He has I don't a know great what the angle. It's on, but but angle or not, it's on yeah. WWE to figure out how to put these people in the best light. And I'll remind folks. I'm not saying Vince is there today. In fact, you we all know Vince ain't there today. Yeah. But mm -hmm. Vince, who's supposed to be the Moondar genius, put a stuttering character on the guy who graduated first in his class with a public speaking degree, but I'll digress. Yeah. And Santino's daughter, uh, Ariana Grace in NXT, has an That's amazing gimmick. Wait, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't just roll over that. What? Yeah, yeah. Santino Morello's daughter. And her she has that. She has that it factor. She has that it factor too. So I could see her. I had no idea. And her gimmick is that she's Miss NXT and she wears a sash. And now, and <laughs> I, I swear to God, that. you guys are gonna think this is corny, but this is the sitcom shit I live for. Mm -hmm. Gigi Dolan lost a match to her, and now she's gonna do a My Fair Lady and teach Gigi Dolan how to be a proper superstar and Question. like give her etiquette lessons. Where did Gigi amazing. Dolan come from, in your opinion, Glenn? What's that? Where does the word the name Gigi Dolan come from, in your opinion? I think there's a Gigi Allen reference in there, kind of like Darby Allen. Actually, it's funny, it's the other half, and she used to be involved with Darby Allen. So it's funny that she's Gigi Dolan, he's Darby Allen. Uh, but I'm not sure what the Dolan is a reference to specifically. Okay. I think you I think you hit it right in the head right there. Yeah. Um, her character when Toxic Attraction broke up, it seems like they were giving her a major baby face uh. push. But time but it, rewind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Toxic yeah. Attraction was a great mm -hmm. like team that I know I can put on national television. Yeah. And get heat. And get heat. Didn't yeah. they get called up to the main roster for a minute and or a couple of uh, they had a match in that women's tag title tournament when right. Nikita Lyons and Zoe Stark couldn't do it due to a visa issue getting into Canada. But they did not do injustice. Yeah. Um Mandy Mandy Rose, I think, oh. really worked as the leader of that faction. And yeah. was a trillionaire waiting to happen. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I don't care. Well, I, I think says. I think her finances are working out pretty well, Matt, with what she opted her uh, new career is uh... okay, but still, <laughs> I don't care what her hair color is, her yeah, yeah, eye yeah. colors are. I'm sorry, the girl has charisma for days. And I agree. they missed the boat with that. Not to cash in on her because like she did her part, she did everything that you're supposed to do. Ad nauseum because she should have been called up even more prematurely, which she eventually got called up. I, I was very yeah. like for the longest time, Glenn. How long would you say that she carried NXT? Girl or guy? Way, I'm sorry, she yeah. carried it on her own. With the exception of Becky Lynch, they have had a that problem. No, 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 no. But hear my point. Since she left, 
with the exception of Becky Lynch, mm-hmm. they have not had a main event. And I, I love the women's division in NXT, but they nice. have not had someone that has carried the top of that division with the same gravitas, except Becky, since Mandy left. And Mandy carried it over the guys. Yeah. With respect to every guy in that division, I'm sorry. She was a more must-see talent than any guy in that division. WWE effed up majorly with her. Sorry. Tiffany, Tiffany Stratton could have carried it, but they kind of they brought her up, you know, like well, she was champion when Becky defeated her, but yeah. she had her best matches with Becky. I think that was really her graduation. Tiffany's a better promo than her. Raj. Do you really Man. think she's a better promo than Mandy? <sighs> She's good. Not she's yet. Not, not yet. She's not. not yet. Be- she but will be. She yeah. will be. She's not there yet. Yeah. The problem they have, and I don't know why this is. For some reason, the women can get amazing responses and matches. They can do great backstage segments and promos. Yeah. But they've had this problem. Roxanne had this problem. Tiffany Roxanne's had this problem. A good promo too. But Sorry. they win the championship. They go in the ring and they cut a promo. And some of the audience are just not feeling it. Some of them are jerks. Like what you know what needs to happen. I said this, uh, and I know NXT talent watches the other uh coverage I do. So I really think it's gotta be similar to Cody. Like there needs to be if you're uh if you're a budding superstar on a championship road at NXT, you need to go out there and say, Hey, why don't I do a meet and greet while these fans are waiting in line? Why don't I go out and offer to take autographs and photos before the show? Because like it's so psychological, but if you can just get that live audience to get behind you, it is. you tick that it box. Is. You could do so, everything else so, right, but if so, they so, hear so, what chance, you just lose it. Sorry. So let me speak from experience. I did yeah. this in Ohio Valley Wrestling. Ohio Valley Wrestling was the only developmental talent uh, uh, division we had in WWE at the time mm-hmm. when I was there. Heartland Championship Wrestling was shit canned. Every talent in there was shit canned except for Charlie Haas and Lance Cade, if I remember correctly. Um, and they came to us in OVW. And one of the things Jim Cornette helped me get over as a baby face in OVW and making every, oh, go at, you can ask Jimmy, who was the most over baby face he's ever had? It's me, by far and away. I'm not saying it sound like an arrogant asshole. I'm saying it because if you go back and you watch the tapes, he set me up for success on television. However, I was doing everything else outside television mm-hmm. that nobody saw I was at the, what was it called? Shoney's Buffet, signing free autographs. I was at our show an hour to two hours before the event started, and I gave free uh, free autographs to anybody that wanted it. Took pictures and coat uh, back. This is how old I am. But, like, legit, like, photos where the camera, where the photo would come out as you took it, Polaroid. Yeah. Um as we took it on the spot with every single fan. And if you go back and you watch Ohio Valley Wrestling, you'll see everyone in that arena chant, let's, let's go, Matt, as a baby mm-hmm. face fighting from underneath as a seven-footer against a five-foot-ten heel or whoever the heel, heel was. And it was because of the extra-ish I did to make them cheer for me. And yeah. it's so important just said Glenn it's beyond important and I think it's a lost art today because everybody thinks they're super over and they're superstars no you're not you're as big of a superstar as what that arena chants or doesn't chant for you yeah no and it's it's crazy to think about this when you think about how NXT is on national television on USA soon to be on network television on the CW crazy and, and I swear as a crazy. baby face, if you can just get the 200 people in that That's small it, bro. Place to cheer for you Girls you're made. Guys, do yeah. it, please. You're made as a baby face. You guys will make so much money out of this. Sincerely, kiss baby, sign autographs, do whatever that bleep you have to do. Mickey James is the only person I saw as my counterpart that would be out in that parking lot in Ohio Valley Wrestling mm-hmm. in Louisville, Kentucky, spending hours before our event began because she got it. She understood it as a, as our female big world champion baby face. She understood it. And the other guys were like, I'm not going out there. I'm like, cool, more for me. And yeah. um, I get made fun of for it. I'm like, dead. if you go back, I'm dead ass. Watch any Ohio Valley wrestling tape, or nowadays, I can't say tape, but um, what's on Ohio Valley wrestling today online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say from 2002 to 2003, you'll see what I'm talking about. 
as a seven foot, 300 pound stud, like baby face fighting from underneath. I had the whole arena in the palm of my hands because I did that extra work. And it doesn't take extra work to do it. How hard is it to smile for a picture, Glenn? But here's the craziest thing. They do this at the house shows when they go to Lakeland. When they do the four, yes. they do it there. I think that just nobody's thinking to do it on a TV day. Oh, you know? do it on the TV day. I know, do it on the TV day. Being filmed, I know. Dude. I know. Always do it, guys. Girl, and see, and Tiffany Stratton, the reason why she had the best reaction is as a heel, she didn't need the audience. They just needed, she needed them to, to respect her or not what her to death. And they, they did that. They gave her that. But uh, it's going to be interesting. I think Roxanne's winning the championship again. She should. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. She this should. Roxanne's she has a lot a more stud. gravitas now. She She's looked like stud. she looked too young before, but now she looks. No. No, no. Even back then, she had the promo down, in my, my, my opinion. And I so, just think it was a little too soon before. So, but also the Mandy thing, that was a last minute, spontaneous booking decision. Raj, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, next week we could give our predictions for both. Yeah. Uh, WrestleMania and uh, Stand and Deliver. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Okay, uh, everybody, Raj is back from vacation. He needs to go decompress and unpack. <laughs> um, Matt needs to go to the gym. I need to pack. I'm going yes. uh, on a little thing. So, okay, everybody, have a great We'll rest your weekend. Have a great week, and we'll catch you back here next time on Gigantic Pop. Take care, everyone. And hit like, hit like, yeah, and subscribe. like, share, subscribe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.